Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I show at least two tricks I've never shown before. I play with some epoxy, and I think better of flipping a table. Stay tuned. The slabs I'm working with this week are called book match, which means sequentially cut, which means in the middle of the tree, these two pieces of wood sat right next to each other, and they give this really cool mirror image effect when you open them up like a book, hence the term book match. The bum deal about these types of slabs are they are super expensive, and so just these two slabs is like $2,300, but my client specifically wanted this look, so we got her exactly what she wanted. You do need to take really careful measurements before you make these cuts because unlike a single slab resin table, you're really gonna notice if one side is two inches wider than the other side. So before my vacuum bag completely clogged up with dust and epoxy and it was too late to go to the store to get a new one, I took a ton of measurements making sure that when I made my final cuts, each side would be almost exactly the same as the other side. After I got my slabs cut to size, I took them outside because you can see I already made a pretty big mess in here. And if I take my angle grinder to the bark, it is gonna be an absolute disaster in my shop. So I always do this outside and no, my neighbors don't mind. My neighbors love me. They actually are gone at work in the day. So this is a good time for me to make a lot of mess and noise in my driveway. And you can see my go-to there is my Porter Cable Restorer and my angle grinder with a wire wheel. And I will include links to everything I use in this video in the video description below so that way you know exactly what I'm using. I have been using the liquid glass epoxy for the last several months now for the deep pour portions of these tables. I've just recently started using it to seal my edges. I've previously used kind of a quicker drying epoxy and I've found that this works really well to seal the edges if you're not in that big a hurry because it does take longer to dry than those faster drying epoxies. So I mixed up a quick quart batch of it, spread it on the underside, and this is because sometimes a little bit of epoxy will flow underneath and I, if I only use shellac, I might not get a good enough bond. So I like to use that liquid glass epoxy to seal the underside and the edges. I really want to get the sliding table saw attachment for my saw stop. I just do not have room right now. So this is what I'm left with. Also, do not make cuts like this. I'm only doing it so you know exactly what not to do. Until I get room for that big sliding attachment, I have a ton of different sleds that I use. This is my big oversized crosscut sled. I also have a medium one and an extra small one. So they are pretty handy, just not as good as a big slider. And here I'm just cutting my sides. I always cut them at four inches, no particular reason, just seems like a good all around size. This next tip I'm gonna share is one that I get asked about all the time and I don't think I've actually shown it in one of my videos before, but the question I get is how do you make a mold bigger than a four by eight sheet of melamine? And here is how. All you do is run a bead of caulk, get your extension wing, kind of squish it in there, wipe a little bit of extra caulk if you wanna be extra careful, and then come back with a few pieces of this Tyvek tape or the tuck tape. It's just a house sheathing tape, so name brand doesn't really matter, but get a few pieces on there and it will be completely watertight. I have a detailed blog and video on how to make a leak-proof epoxy table mold, and I will include links to both those in the video description. They are essentially the same thing you're seeing here, only much more detailed. You do want to note how I add these extension wings, a little bit of caulk underneath on the back side, on the front side, and then I come back with a extra little support piece, add a little bit more caulk, and then just finish nail it in. And that is all there is to making these oversized molds. If you opt to seal your slabs with the same deep pour epoxy that I used here, you don't need to scuff them up if you do your pour within say 24 hours. I ended up waiting a couple days, so I came back, scuffed everything up really well, and this is gonna ensure you get a proper bond. I get a lot of questions because I know other makers out there like Black Forest, they don't recommend sealing their edges, and that is totally fine. The problem for me is with this black epoxy, it stains really, really bad, so I have to seal my edges. So if you have better luck not sealing your edges, don't worry about it, but I always need to scuff them up really, really well. And for the record, I have never had a slab separate from the epoxy. So knock on wood, everything has gone really well for my tables so far. I always make my forms out of this melamine and mold release spray. I get a lot of questions, uh, people asking if they only have plywood or particle board, can they make a form? And you can, but you'd need to coat it with that Tyvek tape or that tuck tape underneath. You can't just put mold release on like a MDF or a particle board. It is really great having nice neighbors to help out for this type of stuff because I wouldn't have been able to drop this big slab in there by myself. And if I tried, I would have probably busted the side of the mold free. So big thanks to my neighbor. He actually watches these videos sometimes. So I'm curious if he will notice that he got a cameo. I have mentioned in a few past videos that I am now sponsored by Liquid Glass Epoxy. And I promise I am not bragging. I just wanna be as transparent as I can be whenever I am promoting a product. 
I just hope you guys will believe me when I tell you that I would only use the best epoxy because this table is really, really expensive. It is $10,000, it is going to Hawaii, the slabs alone were $2,300. So the little bit in free epoxy is nothing compared to replacing these slabs, paying for freight back from Hawaii, anything that could go wrong. So I would only use the best epoxy in a table like this. So if you wanna show a little support to Liquid Glass for supporting me, I have included links to their products in the video description below. If you aren't familiar with this deep pour type of epoxy, they are extremely slow curing, which means it takes about three days for it to cure, unlike some epoxies that cure in like five minutes. So all these bubbles will really pop on their own. It's just a lot of fun to pop them with the torch. And Liquid Glass advertises this epoxy is good from two to six inches. I think six inches is really, really bold. So I personally don't recommend that unless you have extremely good climate control in your shop, which I do not right now. So I limit it to about two inches. And since these slabs were two and a half, I ended up pouring about an inch and a half, let it get tacky. That's what I was tapping on it a couple seconds ago, and then come back with the second pour and top it all the way off because I ended up going just over two and a half inches, which I think is a little much in one single pour with how hot my shop currently is. Anytime you come back and top off just a little bit more epoxy like this, you need to make sure to really blend the colors with that stick. And I didn't really show how much time you need to spend blending those colors because you might think that even a black pigment is gonna look exactly the same as another black, but it won't necessarily be the same. So make sure to give it a good stirring, mix both colors really, really well. This next trick that I'm gonna show you is actually pretty cool. And I've been asked about this by people a handful of times and I've only had to do it on one other table and you can't see it super well there but the epoxy actually kind of curled the table up. And this is important to note, this isn't the wood. This only works if your epoxy lifted it up just slightly like that. So when that epoxy cures, it shrinks and it can actually pull those sides up slightly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this epoxy up in the sun. I covered the epoxy portion itself with these black bags to make sure I don't get any UV damage put some blankets and some weight on it so these tarps didn't f blow off and then let it warm up. And you can see it doesn't take long. It was about 30 minutes and it was dead flat again. So I put some blankets on top of it after this, let it kind of slow cook for about an hour and monitor the temperature with a heat gun, making sure it didn't get above 130 degrees, clamped it down for the cooling process and then it will be dead flat after this. So it's a pretty cool trick if you have one that uh, maybe gets a little too hot and curls up like that. I get asked all the time, how do you flatten one of these tables if you don't have access to a big industrial shop like I have access to? And first of all, this is Creative Woodworking in Portland. They charge me 75 bucks to flatten these slabs, so it is super cool. But I actually did a blog on three different ways to flatten using a router sled, a CNC, or a big industrial shop. So I will include a link to that in the video description as well. Most of these cracks were pretty benign, but I still wanted to play it a little bit safe and I was gonna add a few splines to them, which are not gonna be as strong as a bow tie. They're also not gonna look as good. This is on the underside of the table. I just have a really simple jig that I built there, cut out a square shape. Anywhere there's a crack, just a, I think I did about three on each side. And again, these aren't as strong as a bow tie, but the epoxy is gonna hold it in there really well. So they will help any small cracks from separating even further. If you have any questions on this weird little simple jig or anything else you see in the video, you should know that I am super good about responding to essentially every single comment that you guys leave below. So feel free to ask me something, feel free to comment, feel free to let me know if you love this table or if you hate this table, or maybe you think you have a better way to do it. So let me know in the comments what you think of this. The only thing I ask of you is if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell in the corner, and that will enable me to keep making more content just like this. One thing I wanna point out is I don't recommend using epoxy on the tops of tables for splines or bow tie joints. And this is a lesson I learned a long time ago is it leaves a really distinct dark line even if you have an absolutely perfect fit. So use wood glue and a little bit of sawdust to fill in any tiny little imperfections. Do not use epoxy for bow ties or splines on the tops of tables. I had a woodworking friend show me this really cool trick and that is to cover your piece with plastic when you are not working on it and that way it prevents one side from absorbing moisture from the air and cupping or warping slightly. After the epoxy cured the next day, I came back with a belt sander and the Rotex and made pretty quick work of flattening those out before moving on to these C channels. And I do have a video on installing these C channels. It is a few years old and I probably know a little bit more and have a little better jig now. So I do think I'm gonna make an updated C channel video on why I use them, where I use them, and the best way to inlay them. 
I get my C channels from Concept 13. It is a really cool small shop and he is nice enough to offer all my viewers a discount. So I will include a link to his shop along with a discount code. I don't get anything for those sales. He's just being nice enough to offer you guys. I think it's a 15% discount if you wanna order these same C channels for your table. My client for this table had reached out because she saw a book matched resin table I built a few years ago and said she wanted the exact same leg. So I said, no problem. They are from a local company here in Portland, Symmetry Hardware. And I made the mistake because this table was going out at the start of August. I didn't get a hold of them until about three weeks before. And they said they were six weeks out. And I said, oh my God, I'm in a bad way. What can we do? And they put a big rush on and had them to me in like just over a week. So huge thanks to the guys at Symmetry Hardware. I'll include the links to these table legs in the video description as well. A few months ago, I realized that some people have questions that are a little too complicated to answer in a quick YouTube comment. So I started offering Skype consultations through my website where I will meet with you face-to-face -face via Skype and we will discuss whatever it is you wanna discuss. And I keep a few of these slots open every week and I've done quite a few of them so far and they've been a lot of fun for me and the people seem to really enjoy them and get something out of it. So if you think I can help with that, feel free to hit me up through these consultations. Some of you might remember a few weeks ago when I got crushed by this table and it didn't look that bad, but it really hurt. So I was wondering how dumb I was flipping this table again by myself. And if you look closely, you can actually see a winch cable dangling down that I installed just to help me flipping these big tables. Somehow pulled this one out though, although I really should be using that winch. I'm just a little worried that it will damage the table when I flip it with that strap kind of denting into the wood, but I really need to come up with a better system than my back. You can't really get router bits this big, so I had to come up with a system to cut these chamfers with my track saw, and it's a pretty slick little system I came up with by overlapping that track just slightly over the edge, and if you want a detailed description on exactly how to cut this edge profile, I have a full YouTube video on that, so I'll add a link to that in the video description below. I definitely understand that not everybody can afford an $800 circular saw like I have here to make this cut. I do think it would be possible with a regular circular saw. It would just probably take a little bit more time and be a little bit more difficult. I will include links to that saw, this sander, that special instant drying glue that I'm using there. Everything in this video will be linked in the description below. And you should know those are affiliate links, which just means I get a small percentage of all the sales. There is nothing there that an advertiser paid me to place there. They're all stuff I was using in the video and I'm just showing you which ones I purchased. And it's not a ton of money I get from those, but if I have a popular enough video, if enough of you guys use those links, it can actually make a pretty big difference some months. So if you wanna show some support for the page and not have to do anything other than buy stuff you were already gonna buy, I do appreciate it if you use those links. You'll see me use these lights all through the sanding process. And one tip I have for you is buy photography lights. Don't buy shop lights. Shop lights are more expensive and worse than photography lights. The photography lights, you can control the brightness, the temperature, the color everything that is super handy for making these videos, but it's also super handy for inspecting your work. I made this sanding glove in a video a few months ago, and I found that the Velcro wore out a little bit on the glove itself, so I added this Festool interface pad, and now it works really, really well, and it won't wear out at all. So that is a little tip. If you did make that sanding glove, add that Festool interface, and it'll last a lot longer. I did a really detailed finishing video recently, and one thing I don't think I showed in there is on the final grit, this is 180 is the last grit that I'm sanding to, is I changed to a really soft pad on my Festool sander. And this just makes a little bit of difference, but it's those little things that really help get you that better finish. So I had a soft pad along with that mesh sanding disc, and that prepared me to start with my Rubio Monaco right here. In that video, I go over the fact that I really like to finish the underside first and wipe everything off and then basically immediately flip it over. <laughs> the problem is I was not nearly as strong as I was for the last flip apparently and I couldn't find a neighbor. So I was really nervous about damaging this table if it falls back down on that face. I was gonna be devastated and have to start all over on that sanding process. So I tried and I tried and I thought about it and it's almost and then just decided to go for it because I couldn't get a hold of my neighbor. And now we're gonna see if I get crushed again. Oh man, I was so nervous. And somehow made it without hurting the table or myself. And that way I could finish this top side right after finishing the underside. There are some specific steps if you decide you wanna add a second coat of Rubio Monaco because they recommend this as a single coat finish. However, 
I have found I can get a little more sheen and a little better protection if I add a second coat. However, you need to follow the steps in my blog or my finishing video. And this video is not sponsored by Rubio, although I feel like it should be. All right, here are some finished studio shots of this book matched walnut and resin dining table. And I go back and forth whether I prefer this single slab style resin table or this book match style. And I would love to know what the majority of you guys think. So every week I like to give a little bit of credit to the people that make it all the way to the end of the video. So start your question or comment with book match, slab, or neither. That way I will know you made it all the way to the end of the video and I promise I will answer all of your questions first. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos just like this one. Have a great day.